Hey guys, and welcome back to Divine Journey 2, where last episode we started through the Draconic Evolution chapter of our quest book. We also built an automatic wither farm to give us nether stars. We have currently 25 stacks. We also unlocked the ultimate grafting table and crafted a couple of the tier 5 seeds. So our goal for today, at least for the first part of the video, is actually not to progress down 25. Instead, I would like to complete this quest down here. This quest is to make the liquid crafter. However, crafter with this thing is very tedious as uh, <laughs> it takes multiple different fluids and uh, handling fluids with AE is not the most elegant thing. So eventually, I think we're going to end up with five of these things, maybe six. But let's start by making just two. The reason we want to start off with two more is for our solar ingot recipe. And this is a two-stage process. We have to first make empowered solar dust and then combine that with different fluids and also different input items to create our solar ingots. And this is what we use in Draconic Cores. So to make crafting these things a lot easier, we now have access to tier 5 seeds. And for each liquid crafter, we need 63 reinforced machine casings. I think it adds up to be a little bit more than that with all the hatches. But each of these take heavy duty plates, which take a lot of galactic ingots. And the galactic ingots are made with star metal and resonating gems, which come from aquamarine. At this point though, we can create star metal seeds, and I think also request our aquamarine seeds. Which again, we will plant in our mystical agriculture farm. And of course, give them their own crafter to craft down the ingots. Or the gems, I guess you could say, in the case of aquamarine. So that gives us star metal, basically for free. And the star of revelation is not consumed in the craft. And the aquamarine here has to be processed well, twice. The first step is to fluid transpose with molten plutonium into sparkling aquamarine, which we already have set up passively here. We're buffering eight stacks of this stuff. And after we do that, the second part is to starlight infuse this into resonating gems. So I guess we're back to astral sorcery here. To starlight infuse, we have to use our, well, starlight infuser. <laughs> However, this does take liquid starlight. And currently we do buffer starlight up here. However, we are just filling this chest manually with uh, rock crystals. But manually really isn't the name of the game with Divine Journey, is it? <laughs> Let's fully automate this process. Alright, that's more like it. So we now have passive starlight generation. There is a couple of different options we could have used for these light wells. The starlight recipe here actually is based on what input item you give it. And I think the attuned celestial crystals are the best ones. Basically they have the least chance of breaking while they're inside the light well. But this sparkling aquamarine only takes a little bit of plutonium to fluid transpose. And of course we have the aquamarine seeds, so this is more or less just free starlight for us. So the way we're distributing them is just via conduit, same as we had on the temporary setup, except this time they're coming from an ender chest, which is hooked up next to where we create our sparkling aquamarine here. There we go, it should catch up to the buffer once it fills the, the ender chest. But there is two more considerations I made when deciding on a placement for this. The reason it's so high in the air is because we get a buff when we're above Y120 I think it is. And we also place this in an area of concentrated starlight. You can see like a slight blue shimmer on, on here, which you can see whenever you hold the Fosic Resonator. And the third way we're boosting this is by this collector crystal. So when you shine starlight on these uh, light wells, it basically speeds up the generation of starlight. All of the output of the starlight goes straight into this black hole tank, which holds a lot of starlight. <laughs> I don't know if we'll ever fill this thing, but um, yeah, that goes from the black hole tank and then into our ender tank. And the ender tank is connected to that starlight infuser down there. But I guess we can also clean this up further and remove all of this temporary stuff. Oh, that was a mistake. <laughs> so yeah, that should ensure that we never run out of starlight for the starlight infuser and make it much easier to create our galactic ingots. So one of the other huge parts that we need for this liquid crafter is going to actually be the production of these heavy play-ins. Right now we do have some of them on passive, but since we don't have the galactic ingots on passive, um, it's basically not running all of the time. Plus, even when these are running, these electric compressors are really slow. <laughs> but there is actually something we can do about that. So back in the Galacticraft chapter, there is this quest 
that we passed up. However, I think we will circle back and actually make this thing. So this is the ultimate compressor. And not only does this give four plates at a time, it also does it in one tick each. So yeah, <laughs> this completely removes the need for us to passive these materials. And instead we can just do it on demand. But again, this is not a cheap multi-block to build. The biggest expense in this thing is going to be 12 advanced compressors, which look like this, which takes 12 electric compressors and 12 regular compressors. So yeah, we've got a lot of crafting to get this up and running. <laughs> And also a lot of heavy duty plates, but I think by now we should be able to do it, especially since we have the galactic and it's much easier with the seeds. Alright, so we now have the advanced compressor multi-block. And I didn't want to show you my advanced multi-block building skills. <laughs> But we got it built here. And I've also just hooked up an interface straight to the item import with the modified recipes to give the extra uh, plate outputs. And the output of the multi block just goes straight back into another ME interface. Since we're doing it on demand, I don't think there's much of a reason to store them in drawers. Instead, we can just store them on our ME drives. And you may have noticed here that I also changed things up in this room. We knocked out the wall that used to be here and I changed a little bit of this arch. But what I'm thinking here is, obviously this liquid crafter isn't going to stay. So I think actually there's going to be a wall right around here. And we'll just take away all of this extra limestone here. And the liquid crafters I think will be placed down next to our laser down here. I'd like to expand this room and uh, we'll place our liquid crafters on the other side of this laser. And that way it keeps things a little bit more space efficient. Yeah, cleans this area up a little bit. But having a look at our liquid crafter again, the other part that we need for this is a lot of fortified glass. And there's no way for us to fully automate this as it's a thumbcraft process. We do have the elf glass on passive, but we do also need warden sigils for this. And the warden sigils take blank seals. These are not really an issue. Uh, Thaumium plates are easy. Magic tallows we have on passive and infused magical cores. And these, if you'll remember, are made with Garmon Bosia which is from Vengeance Essence, and this you can only collect manually. So this we'll have to just batch craft with. However, this is also a combination craft, and the combination crafts we're going to be using a lot here in the near future. We use this actually to combine singularities with, and the way we've been doing it is just by manually filling in this combination crafter, which is also how we're making our Elevatium ingots. But swapping that out more and more, especially when it comes to the singularity, is going to be... No bueno. <laughs> so let's craft another combination crafter. I counted out the pedestals that we would need for our singularities, and I think the most I counted was 10 singularities in one input. So we'll make enough for 10 pedestals. And this has to be made in the ender crafter, which we should really get around to upgrading, but um, <laughs> yeah, there's enough for five right now. I think the rest are just coming through the crucible. And we will need the crafting core itself. Alright, so I think we got it all hooked up here. I decided just to put it next to this other crafting core that we have here for Elevatium ingots. And we've used a similar setup with the lasers. The center item laser really is on the highest priority, and all others are on negative one. Meaning that the first item that we encode inside the pattern will be the first item that's sent and therefore end up in the middle pedestal. And the order of the rest of the items in the craft, it doesn't actually matter which order you place these ones in, so long as the magical core gets placed in the center. So we have an applied energistics connection up here with an interface supplied into a chest. This is also on blocking mode. So when we request the magical core, all of the items go into the chest. And then we have item conduit on the back to put it into the actually additions item interface, where it will then be pushed by the item laser relays onto the pedestals. And then the outputs here just come from the bottom of the center crafting core. And we have to make sure that we blacklist the items that we want to craft with. So yeah, it's a pretty simple setup to be honest, but it's going to help us out in the long run, especially with those all those singularities and things. <laughs> and we do already have a few magical cores that we can use. I uh, batch crafted these about a week ago, but I think we've got one more Garmin Bosia to test this system out. So when we request this, all the items go into the correct slots, but hopefully the finished product should be put back in our ME system. Yeah, there we go. Nice. And it completed the craft. It did. Awesome. So yeah, other than that, I don't think there's any other infrastructure that would make these liquid crafters any easier. <laughs> I think we just have to craft this thing by now. So we're going to need, what, 126 of these machine casings? We are short some star metal, but I think that's just because the drawer is full. But yeah, it looks like we can actually craft this now. <laughs> and 1400 compressed plates of each doesn't seem as quite as bad now that we have this compressor. Alright, so we'll craft our fortified glass. I think we need 28 extra of this. There's 24. Okay, well, we're four short. Okay, this needs another warden sigil. 
and we're out of crafting CPUs. Yeah, at some point we should <laughs> we should really upgrade our applied energistics crafting capabilities. I mean, we're still on like two tiny CPUs that we set up way back at the start, and three slightly bigger CPUs. But I mean, still these are <laughs> these are nothing for this point in the game. And um, we'll need our item inputs. The item outputs is crafting. Man, look at the speed on these plates. That is so good. <laughs> we'll need fluid input and output. There's fluid input, two of those ones. And we just have to wait on batches of the reinforced machine casing. Alright, so we got an extra space here next to our laser, and I've started laying out our liquid crafters. The only thing we're short for this last one here is 6 machine vents, or 7 machine vents. And to make 7 of these things, we are short um, some energized dark ingots. And energized dark ingots is something we've had set up since the very beginning of our automations actually. It's on this machine wall over here, and it's made in this fluid transposer. I'm not sure if there's anything else we can do to speed this up, to be honest. I already upgraded this crusher to maximum, <laughs> and I also switched out the induction smeller that used to be here with an alloy smeller. So yeah, I think that'll take a good 15 minutes or so to fill up. But something else I just now realised is actually two liquid crafters for solar ingots is actually not enough. <laughs> I think we actually need three of these things. Alright, and three liquid crafters we have there. <laughs> well, this one still isn't finished, we're still waiting on the machine vents. In fact, you know what, we could probably just take it out of this one. Yeah, we won't need this one for quite some time, so let's just steal the machine vents out of this, just to get this going. Uh oh, are we still missing something out of this one? Did we build this wrong? <laughs> there we go. So yeah, while I was waiting on the machine vents, I did also go ahead and start hooking up these other two. So again, this first one is for sulfuric acid. So we have an interface here to supply our crystallized sulfur that all automatically goes inside the input bus. Or the, the input bus. <laughs> this isn't Greg Tech. The item input. Of course, all of these have power from the power cell in the back. And the output for this will be more sulfuric acid. So we have ender fluid conduits coming out of both of the output hatches. And these are set to round robin disabled so that they will respect priorities. So over here on the input hatch, we have the highest priority insert. So this will prioritize recycling the sulfuric acid back into the inputs, and any excess will be sent into this ender tank, which is hooked up to the next liquid crafter here. And in fact, let's just get this process going. So it should just be a matter of putting one bucket in just to jumpstart the process. And so long as we have item inputs, which are on passive, so we should technically never run out of this. This is going to process, give us double the amount of sulfuric acid, which will prioritize this input hatch. And I think one more recipe, we should start seeing it in this ender tank. Yeah, there we go. There's our first sulfuric acid. And we can automatically insert this into the input hatch here. This one is done. <laughs> So the next one is going to take our sulfuric acid purifying fluid. And I'm not really sure what we should do about purifying fluid. We make that over here on request using the arcane spa. But I wonder since now we have bath salts on passive, maybe we should just passive the purifying fluid. I'm not sure what happens though if this uh, arcane spa fills up. I guess there's only one way to find out. <laughs> yeah, if we move this interface down a block. Request bath salts from our ME interface. And insert this into the arcane spa. It should keep producing us purifying fluid. Yeah, and the ender tank's definitely filling up, so let's maybe wait until it fills up though. Um, I really don't want this to keep spitting out fluids, even if there is fluid in this block space. Oh, nice, it did actually stop. 
Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> that makes things so much easier. It means that we don't have to worry about doing this on request anymore. We can get rid of this pattern. And so long as we have bath salts, we have purifying fluid. Awesome, so that is the two fluids taken care of. These two item inputs we have from the builder in Venus. So we just have to have a pattern with these two items. And while we're here, we can also grab the solar and get recipe pattern. And the empowered solar dust can go into this interface. Uh, we don't have to worry about blocking mode for this one. Which on request will send the items into the input. We don't have to worry about fluid in outputs for this liquid crafter. But the item outputs will come out of the output hatch and straight back into the ME interface to complete the craft. And then from here we have the solar ingot recipe, which takes the creosote oil and the protein. So the protein we buffer right here, straight out of this protein reactor. And we have a full portable tank of this stuff. And the creosote oil is made over next to these redstone furnaces, which makes our coal coke. And similarly, we are also full on creosote oil. So I've hooked up a fluid interface here and asked for both of the fluids. And both of these fluids can just be filtered into one of each of these input hatches. You just have to enable this conduit and these should start filling up. Awesome. And the last step is to send the item inputs. So all we need for this is the pattern for solar ingots. And similar to the other one over there, we have item conduit taking the finished product and putting it back into our interface. So the solar ingots still aren't that cheap. I mean, they still take these uh, solar array panels, which take quantum disks and rainbow tablets, etc. <laughs> so long as we have these input items, we can easily make solar ingots. And therefore, we have a much, much easier way to create draconic cores. So in fact, let's just test this out. I don't know, let's request 64 solar ingots. What are we short on? Photovoltaic composite. I think photovoltaic composite is actually used for mana dust. It's been that long. <laughs> I really don't remember. Where do we even make that thing? Is it over here maybe? Has to be one of these. I'm sure it is. Ah, photovoltaic dust. Yeah, this is used in mana in the mana powder recipe. Let's just storage upgrade the drawer. Now can we request a stack of solar? I mean we have the item inputs. <laughs> oh, this is so exciting. It's crafting. It's crafting. <laughs> This one should be processing. Missing fluid input. Oh, we just have to enable this ender tank. There are we going? Yeah, there we go. Then we should see the items up here in this one. Any second now. There we go. <laughs> right on cue. And we're processing and we should have solar ingots. Nice. <laughs> oh, this is so good. It took so long to get those up and running, but it's worth it. And yeah, this first liquid crafter is just going to keep producing us the sulfuric acid. Looping round and round in circles. <laughs> that is its only purpose. So yeah, obviously this liquid crafter will be repurposed and also relocated, probably down next to the other ones. And look at that, our solar ingots are coming through nicely. <laughs> but yeah, I guess let's move on to more draconic evolution. Oh, and one more thing. While I was waiting on all of that plating and those machines crafting, I decided to make a bit of a floating island of this. The shape is still a little bit off. It's actually really difficult to create something like this, but <laughs> I had a go. Yeah, I mean, it looks better than just floating bricks, but... So yeah, looking back at our quest book here, I think the next one we'd like to pick up is this Crystal Eyes quest. This is going to give us access to Fusion from Draconic Evolution. And with Fusion, we can get Awakened Draconium and the final tier of Processor. And once we have the scheduling circuit, or the scheduling processor, we actually get access to the mass inscriber, which is something I've been waiting for for quite a while. <laughs> our AE2 um, crafting capabilities are way too low, so yeah, this is going to be our next multi-block that we build, and we're going to be using that thing to rip this thing out. Um, <laughs> this is a very, very old setup and could do with some upgrades, but we've got a long journey before we can get there. First of all, we have to make crystal teen ingots, which is an elite crafting recipe using star leather, plasma cores, and crystalline alloy. So I think the crystalline alloy we have on passive, the star leather we have on request, and the plasma cores we also have on request. So we can encode a simple 82 pattern here, and for now just put it in this interface, which should put it all into the crate for us to craft with. And the quest is looking for 10 of these things. Yeah, we can craft 10 of these. It does have to go through quite a lot of magical leather, which uh, does take a little while in the starlight infuser. We may have to buff that even more, but we certainly should have the starlight with our upgrades today. I mean, this is already pretty quick. I did put some upgrades in these mechanical users. So yeah, there is our first 10 crystal teen ingots. Oh, our fusion crafting quest is actually still locked here. Hmm, it wants beamer presentation. Oh wait, was that the one that we left out in chapter 24? It was, okay. So yeah, we need uh, beam receivers and beam reflectors. And looking at the recipe for these, they actually don't look too bad. We can now actually have a beam core recipe in the combination crafting that we added earlier on. And then this energy bridge receiver is very, very simple to craft. We have a crafting recipe already for this core. And these are just heavy duty plates. 
Oh, but the reflector takes a magic hand mirror. Oh, this is Thumbcraft stuff. <laughs> oh, and this takes magic mirrors, mirrored glass. Hey, at least we have sodium on passive now though. Okay, how many of these do we actually need? We need four for the crafting core and also one per injector. Oh man, that's actually quite a lot. Okay, well, how many injectors do we need? Normally, I think it's 10 injectors that you need maximum. This one ha looks like it has 12 in this one. We may as well create all 12 at once. Uh, I don't think there's any more than that, though. Yeah, there's another 12 recipe. The rest are all 5s, 4s, or 3s. Yeah, so we want 12 crafting injectors and one fusion crafting core, which means 16 of these reflectors. Oh, that is a lot of mana diamonds. <laughs> okay, we're short a couple of mana powder. Anything else? No, I think that's it. So yeah, just the mana diamonds. Maybe we should increase our buffer on that, actually. Yeah, let's increase this level emitter, actually, and take it up to 512. Yeah, sure. While we are waiting on some buffers, we can also add the recipe for the receiver and the reflector. And we'll need one for the beam core as well. Oh, and this is going to take 15 purified tablets. Those take forever. <laughs> let's get those going right now, actually. Yeah, 15 of these things. That's already super expensive. Oh, and while we're on this chapter, actually, there is also this quest up on the top right corner, which is, I think, maybe the fourth quest for Elevatium by now. <laughs> but we did actually open up a third way to create Elevatium, which is to use our laser focus. However, this doesn't seem very worth. Uh, we currently use the combination craft for this, but building a separate laser focus just for this thing, uh, yeah, it doesn't seem that worth. <laughs> and we can just keep the combination craft that we have. And same with Mirian, actually, there is a recipe in the laser focus, which is probably going to be faster than the, than the empowerer. But we've given Mirian its own empowerer, and this is on passive, so there's not really any reason to change it. And yeah, we're at over a full drawer of Mirian, so <laughs> let's just pick them up for the quest. So after a little bit of crafting, we can pick up our first reflector and receiver which was one of the last quests we have in chapter 24. And we get two free beam cores for this. I'm just curious if we get any reflectors as quest rewards for this. Yeah, we don't, so. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we do have to actually make 15 more of these things. Actually, you know what? Let's make sure we can actually get 15 or 12 crafting injectors. These do take draconic machine frames each, uh, plus chemical injection chamber. The chemical injection chambers, though, shouldn't be too bad. Okay, for 12 of these injectors, let's see what we're missing. 500 star metal, um, some pulverized coal, reinforced alloy, these are all just buffer issues, energetic silver, yeah, we have all that stuff on passive, we just don't buffer enough in the drawers. I'll go and increase some of those drawers, but I mean, I guess we can do six at a time. And while we wait on that thing, let's, oh, the quest only wants nine of them. Maybe we should just make nine to start off with. <laughs> uh, we'll see. Let's work on the crafting core though. Is there anything else we don't have for this? It's going to be 20... Eight heavy duty plates, tier three. Twelve blue solar wafers. I'm sure we can get those ones. Oh yeah, we already have tons of loot from Mars. Four wyvern cores and four wyvern energy cores is something I'm not sure about. This is definitely going to put our automations to the test recently. Okay, we have one of each, so we need another three. We can get three of those. Can we get three wyvern cores? We can get three wyvern cores, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, this is why we need all our nether stars. Which, by the way, we're actually up over nearly 6,000, which is awesome. But apart from that, I think we've got the rest of the stuff for the fusion crafting core. So since this will also take a little while to craft, we should also consider where we want to put our fusion setups. And I don't think this is going to be like Omni Factory, where we need like dozens and dozens of these things. I think we can just get away with one due to the way that the recipes are set up. We may end up with a few more, but it's not going to be anything like we did in Omni Factory. So I was thinking actually that we put it in this little space, just next to our terminals here. It'd be a, quite a convenient spot. Plus we have quite a lot of channels available over here. Yeah, we're only using 10 off of this line, so we could very easily expand this out and have a little space here for fusion crafting. And then this space that we freed up last episode, I'm thinking that we actually use for alchemistry. And that way we're not left with a big empty space in the middle of our base by the end of the pack. So <laughs> yeah, I think that's going to be our plan going forward. So uh, let's build out a little room here to house fusion crafting. In fact, let's maybe like dark it out. Let's use basalt for the floor instead. Oh, and one more thing while I was crafting up those injectors, I realised that this crafting core was actually set up incorrectly. I had to move this output interface down as I think the laser was put into the interface and that was uh, scrambling up all of these pedestals. And I've also removed the chest as a buffer and we're just going straight from the ME interface into the actually additions interface. And those changes seem to have fixed this, especially when you're ordering multiple of the same recipe. 
So yeah, maybe something like this could work for fusion. We'll put our fusion subs right in the center here. I think this could turn out pretty cool. And I also found a little space back here. Check this out. <laughs> So we just have all the miscellaneous items that we have, like a framing table for our drawers, some of the tinker's items, a bed, the anvil, uh, the coin engraver here for Abyssal Craft. All these things desperately kind of needed a place in the base, and I didn't really want to leave them through here at the main area. And I think similarly, these crafting tables will also be moved. We may end up creating another room off this way. Or actually, no, this is, yeah, this is the farm out here. We can't do that. Uh, <laughs> we'll find something. Maybe we even expand this room this way a little bit. There is some space out here. But yeah, these invisible blocks are spectral platforms from Batania. These we got from uh, all those Venus dungeons that we were in. The sneaky blocks lead into lava. <laughs> but anyways, I decided just to go for nine of these injectors to start with, which took forever to craft. <laughs> Especially all of this uh, runic matrix crafting. But the items for the fusion core should be in this chest. We have to ultimate craft this into our fusion crafting core. Oh, and we had some heavy plates left over. And our quest. Nice. So this is something we'll definitely want to automate as the quest recommends over here. However, before we do that, we should probably just upgrade... Uh, like straight upgrade these fusion injectors. Basically the way this fusion crafting works is you have to have a certain tier. So like for example this recipe here requires chaotic, which means that you need the chaotic fusion injectors. The basic then you take them up to wyvern, which we should be able to do here. We have all of these materials on request. Draconic tier we can't quite get yet because of the awakened cores. And then after draconic it's chaotic. Yeah chaotic is the final tier. So I guess this means we need 18 Wyvern cores and 18 Draconic cores. Basically 18 of each of these items. Let's see if we can get those to upgrade. So 18 Wyvern cores. Uh, we are short some tin clumps. Uh oh. That is not a good sight to see. <laughs> oh no. And iron clumps. Okay, this is a this is a problem. Yep, these tin clumps we make over here at this mechanism setup. Oh, we're actually full on ore. Oh yeah, we have 200,000 tin ore and 260,000 iron ore. So yeah, it's not the ore that's the issue, it's the gas in here. And it looks like we're short on oxygen for this. Something must be broken here. <laughs> Why are we short on oxygen? Oh, is it just the separator? Wait a sec. Surely this separator can't have been like this since we set it up. Did we really just have that much big of a buffer of oxygen? That's crazy, I don't believe that. <laughs> These machines definitely need some upgrades as well though, to catch back up to their buffer. Okay, I think I fixed this setup. We're slowly buffering again on tin and iron clumps. Yeah, it's already over two stacks. I put max upgrades in all of these machines. I'm quite glad that didn't turn into a bigger problem than that. <laughs> it's always a little scary when you see an item like that you're missing. So yeah, 16 wyvern cores, or wyvern cores. <laughs> wow, this is going to take 64 draconic cores to make. Okay, let's do it. So as you're probably aware, fusion crafting takes a lot of power to run. We do only have access to advanced powers. In fact, can we make the next tier? No, oh, the next tier is creative. Okay, we yeah, we can't get this yet. <laughs> but we'll definitely want to upgrade our energy conduits. Maybe let's just use Stellar, or the one below that, maybe Melodic. And these conduits are per connection, so we can hook it up to multiple sides of this power cell, even though this is only 20,000 RF per tick limit. So we'll start with a setup like that and just see how the power draw is. And the more power you give this at once, the quicker the crafting will be. But yeah, it looks like we have run through our backlog of Tenebrae and Crepitus, which I think are two alchemy table crafts. So yeah, it might take a while for the last six to craft up. And then we also need 16 more Draconic Cores, which does take some more alchemy. Yeah, that's another stack of Tenebrae. Well, in the meantime, we could actually look at the next quest uh, next to this Nether Star, which is to get Crystal Matrix ingots. And in this pack, it's actually not too bad. It just takes Nether Stars and Diamond Lattice. Unlike, I think it was in Omni Factory where these things were super expensive. <laughs> but here it's just an Alloy Smelter recipe for the Crystal Matrix. Nice. So the quest, I just read this quest text here. It says if you're low on diamonds, craft a diamond seed. I mean, if you get to this point without crafting a diamond seed, that's very surprising. <laughs> Anyways, with our Crystal Matrix ingots, we have to unlock another type of crafting table which is the Avaricia version. Oh no, this takes another ultimate gra- oh no. <laughs> okay, um, three more impetus jewels, I guess. Oh, this is a lot more crafting storages too. Yeah, we really have to upgrade our applied energistics crafting. Soon though, soon. <laughs> okay, let's try to get another ultimate crafting table. We're short of something. Impetus jewels, and that's it. That's actually surprising. <laughs> okay, let's make three more impetus jewels. And we even have enough peril durability here. I like when you have all the materials. <laughs> it doesn't happen very often, but for things like this, it's satisfying. 
So after a little bit of crafting and patience, we can create our next three elite crafting tables. Upgrade this to our second ultimate crafting table. Oh, and it also gives us the crafting units back again. Let's just delete them for a second time. And the recipe to upgrade this again is just eight crystal matrix ingots in our laser, which I already added a recipe for, so this should be really quick to craft. Yeah, there we go. The ultimate crafting table. So this extreme crafter can give us access to a lot of the tools and weaponry actually, along with the, the good armor sets. Oh, and this is also how we craft our key to infinity. I forgot about this thing. <laughs> yeah, this is our goal of the pack. We're getting closer, we're getting closer. But yeah, I think the, th the first things we're going to craft with this is the wyvern sets, which incidentally is actually the next quest for us, I believe. Yeah, we're required to make the full wyvern tool set and also the wyvern armor, which has changed in its progression slightly in this pack. I had a look at this earlier on. Basically, we have to make a potato set, <laughs> which comes from all these... Look at this. So titanium, dash, heavy, mystic, skyfather, electricium, cold iron, silver, thomium, and then thomium is... Actually, how do we make thomium? There's the thomium there. And then terra steel, elementium, living, <laughs> mana steel, dreadium, refined, emeradic, and this is the bottom. So yeah, we've got that to look forward to. <laughs> it really won't be too bad, to be honest. I think we've got all the materials. It's just very tedious crafting. But yeah, for now, let's just close out the episode by trying to upgrade our injectors. So all of the wyvern cores finished, along with the draconic cores. We put our injector in the fusion crafting core and all the other items on a pedestal. This unlocks the recipe, and all we have to do is start this. I believe we can also start this with a redstone signal, which is, of course, something we'll hook up when we automate it. But yeah, the charging speed doesn't look too bad at this tier, although I don't think this is a huge energy cost to do this. Well, 24 million. <laughs> it's still a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not that much. So yeah, there's the first injector. Now we have to do that eight more times. Yeah, eight more times at least. And in fact, we can take off single item mode and just split the items up and put eight on each. Yeah, this will make this a lot smoother, actually. <laughs> All right, this is the last injector we have to craft. And that will take us up to nine fusion crafting injectors. There it is. I guess we'll have to mine the rest of them, though, to pick up for the quest. Nice, so that opens up Awakened Draconium, which will involve a bunch of dragon hearts and more draconic crafting. Along with charged draconium, how do we make... Oh, it's in the laser focus, okay. Well, that's definitely not too bad. Only 40 ticks as well. Yeah, that's actually nice to see. <laughs> but yeah, that's all something to look forward to next episode. And speaking of next episode, actually, there's not going to be an episode tomorrow. There's some things out of the game I have to take care of, but uh, we'll be back on Friday for regular scheduled videos. But I think we're going to wrap things up here, so thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all on Friday for some more Divine Journey 2.